Hello, and thank you for tuning into this podcast. My name is Kelsey McNichol, and I'm sitting here with a very talented young musician, Jeff Anderson. Say hi, Jeff, and tell us who you are. Hello, I'm Jeff Anderson, and I play bass and guitar in six different bands in Stockton, California. Tell us a bit about your family and your musical background. How did you get involved in music? Well, my parents were both music, music educators in the Lincoln Unified School District, and, uh, and see, I think I started off in my mom's choir in about second grade, and then one day after school, my dad had a trumpet laying around, and I picked it up and started playing around it, and uh, he came in and asked me if, uh, he was amazed that I could actually get a sound out of it, and asked me if I wanted to be in band. And I said yes, sounded way better than being in my mom's choir. And uh, I actually got to start band a year earlier than everyone else. You didn't want to be a little choir boy? No, I didn't really have that much fun in choir. I see. So where'd you go from there? Well, I played trumpet all through uh, third third through eighth grade in my dad's band. And uh, one day in eighth grade, um, I picked up a guitar. I often had to wait for my parents to get finished working, so I'd be stuck at school till around five or six o'clock. And picked up a guitar one day and just just kind of called to me that you know, this is an instrument I should start playing. And so I played trumpet all through high school and played guitar in the jazz band. And uh, both jazz bands actually, and uh, yeah, just started really progressing. Started practicing guitar way more than I did trumpet. And, I don't know. I guess in the end, guitar won. <laughs> Since I don't really play trumpet anymore, part of that's because I don't have a trumpet anymore. But uh, yeah, I'd like to thank my family for being so musical. I like to say that I was kind of born into music, my parents being music majors, and I don't know, sometimes I wonder if there was even another path I could have taken besides music. I did do a lot of art before, before I started playing music and all through high school I did art, but I think music is probably my number one passion. So how many instruments do you play? Well, I play bass and guitar, and I sing. Um, I could probably still play trumpet. A little bit of piano, kazoo, random percussion instruments that don't require a lot of thought or skill. (laughs) I could play didgeridoo. It's like a big trombone that you can play one note on. Once you get that one note, it's pretty freaking fun. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So, would you say that you primarily play bass and guitar? Yes, I would. <laughs> Do you have an inclination towards one or the other? Oh, that's a tough question. Mostly because I play them both equally, or at least I like to think that I play both of them equally. Um, <laughs> Uh, as far as the way they are played, it, or as far as, I mean, a bass and guitar, for the most part, are both tuned in fourths. Um, so as far as scales and, you know, little riffs and chords go, the fingerings are pretty much the same. A little bit different on guitar since you have two extra strings, but for the most part, they're the same, which is what drew me to bass after starting on guitar. Obviously, you play the two instruments differently, but you know, it's hard to pick one because I have just as much fun playing bass as I do guitar and vice versa. What I do like about playing both instruments is once I started to really learn how to play bass and make us, you know, play a solid bass line and get through a song, it improved my guitar playing immensely, just knowing how a bass player thinks, I guess. And I guess that's one of the benefits I feel I get is having the mindset of both of a guitar and a bass player and allow 
allowing me to see the music from more than one perspective. So at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned that you're involved in six different bands. What projects are you currently involved in? Let's see. Well, at school, I go to Delta College in Stockton, California, and I play in the big band and the jazz combo there, which is uh, it's very nice to be in school for music. It's uh, what I love to do, and I like waking up every day and doing what I love. Outside of school, I'm uh, also in four other bands. Um, the first one I'll mention is called Take With Food, which is uh, kind of the first band I was officially in after high school. It's kind of a jam band. We have set songs that we know and play, but if I was to advertise for us, I'd say we're good for weddings and events, wine tasting, parties, stuff like that. It's kind of more of a, you know, I'd say background music than a serious band. The second band I'll mention is uh, Fat City Jokers, which is a psychabilly, rockabilly band, which is uh, really a, a style of music that I never really listened to um, before I joined the band. And I like that because it's uh, you know, it was a learning experience for me. And for a while, I was kind of ridiculed by all the other bands in the scene. Until I finally really just worked out my parts, and after that, I was getting praise from every guitar player that I ran into. Mm-hmm. And so, no, it's cool just because it's a different style than I ever thought I would be playing. It helps keep me well rounded as far as different styles of music goes. You play guitar in that band? Yes, I play lead guitar. And take with food, I play bass in it. <laughs> and then what else are you involved in? Let's see, second to last, Jonathan Michelson. Um, Jonathan Michelson is a solo Christian activist reggae singer. Wow. Yeah, (laughs) sounds impressive. Sounds like it'd be lots of fun, but I don't know. Working with Jonathan has actually been, I think, beneficial to uh, the members of the band. Uh, Just as far as experience goes and getting out there and playing shows, uh, for a while that band was progressing way faster than any of the other bands, but the downside of that was that we had to deal with the demands of a solo artist. feels very strong about his views on the world, and I won't get into anything too crazy, but it's quite a lesson working with a solo artist. Hmm. That's probably why I will never work for a major major label, you know, one of these labels that's putting out huge pop singers and stuff because music's about doing what you want to do and having fun, not playing what other people want you to play and how they want you to play it. Because then it's just not you. And I think that's I don't think that's too much to ask for. Not at all. (laughs) The last band that I'll list is probably the one I'm most excited about. It's called Ship of Fools. Um, The instrumentation is me on bass, uh, Ryan Blodgett on drums, who is the drummer in the last three bands that I listed, uh, Ralph Miranda on guitar, and uh, DJ No Shame, who does a wonderful job on the turntables, and... uh, That's our rhythm section. Then on top of that, we have Sean Congos on trombone, killing trombone player, uh, Say Dealey, killer trumpet player, plays keyboard and he raps, Isaac Lopez, wonderful sax player, and Carolyn Kendrick, who sings and plays violin quite well. And uh, what I like about this band is if people ask me what kind of music we play, I have to list list off like six different genres to describe it, and that still doesn't do it justice at all. So what type of music Uh, do you guys play? uh, (laughs) I'm glad you asked. Um, Well, if I were to describe what we generally sound like, it would be 
a mixture between hip hop, reggae, jazz, and funk. But there are many different genres that we can cater to, and I think that's one thing I like about this band is that, like for instance, in a couple months we're going to be playing a reggae festival, so we're going to play all reggae music, which is cool.、Um, we're going to have to work on that because、uh, we probably don't have a whole set of reggae to play. But what I like about this band is that we can take on projects like this, and all of us are capable enough musicians that we can easily pull out, you know, two hours of reggae in a short amount of time. And which is what、really、makes us different from any other band out there is that, you know, we can cater to pretty much any musical style that you could request. You know, maybe some style we would need a little more practice before, but for the most part. All of us are pretty well-rounded musicians who, you know, come from all different musical backgrounds, and that's why it's really exciting because it's like a big melting pot of ideas. It's exciting for me because I never know what to expect, but when it happens, I'm always pleasantly surprised. So it sounds like Ship of Fools is involved in a lot of projects right now. Is there one in particular that you're really excited about? Yeah, I'm really excited for this project coming up here pretty soon. We're recording the soundtrack to an independent film. There, Isaac、uh, goes to school with this guy who's a music management major, and this is his third or fourth film that he's done, and it's going to be a '70s throwback that's set in the '90s, I believe. Which is a concept I still don't quite understand, but we get to see the scenes before we decide what kind of music. So that'll be helpful. I'm really excited for this because、uh, it'll be good to have our music out there.、Um, I'm not really doing this for cash or anything, but kind of to help each other out. You know, with our music, we'll promote his movies, and with his movies, we'll promote our music. So it's kind of a cool project, and I'm excited to be working on it right now. It sounds really neat. You'll have to be sure to let us know what the movie is once it's out. Oh, more more than happy to. <laughs> so changing topics a little bit,、uh, can you tell us a bit about what Stockton's music scene is like? And what's your experience been like navigating Stockton's music scene? You know, growing up, I、uh, didn't really think that mu- that Stockton had much of a music scene, mostly because all the shows I heard about were punk shows, and I wasn't really into punk that much. But as I started to actually play Stockton's music scene with multiple bands, I started to realize that Stockton really has a diverse, really good music scene with great musicians and. It's it's kind of sad that no one really realizes it. The way I describe it is, Stockton has a great music scene, just no one knows where to find it. You have to know where to look for it. Most most of the the best shows that I've been in Stockton have been in little hole in the wall coffee shops and places you would never think to stop. Well, I guess that's what attracts us musicians. <laughs> So it sounds like Stockton doesn't really have much of a set musical venue. Where do bands play, and how do you get heard? Well, two of our bands started at the Blackwater Cafe,、um, which, if you're ever in Stockton, is on the Yosemite and Harding. Just a little little cafe. It's got its usual crowd, and it's kind of a good testing ground for new material.、Um, Most of the people there know us, so you know, they listen to what we're playing regardless. But it, when you have new material, it's a good place to pull it out and see what the crowd's reaction is.、Um, Blackwater is probably the first place I would say on on the list.、Um, Plea for Peace is another venue. A couple restaurants and bars, Fats, Chitivas, Lozanos, or restaurants and cafes that. Just have local bands play, which I think is great because it's totally supporting local live music, which I think is probably one of the most important things to keep going, at least in the community. Are there a lot of open mics at these cafes, or how do you get started playing there? <laughs> well, how I started was、uh, playing open mic、um, at Blackwater Cafe in my 
drummer Ryan, who I hadn't played with since high school, asked me to come out to open mic, just jam with him and this guy Josh, who is actually the lead singer of Take With Food right now. And it's kind of a funny story of how we met because I brought my guitar and we were gonna jam just me on guitar, Josh on guitar, and Ryan on drums. And it's kind of funny because I showed up in a, I think I had a Rolling Stones t-shirt on and like a leather jacket, jeans on, and I had my, my hair down. Totally looked like a metalhead or, you know, just some punk kid. And uh, we get up and we're about to play and Josh goes, what, what do you want to play? And I, well, I don't know, I, what do you want to play? Just start playing something. He turned to me and was like, can you keep up? And I just <laughs> looked at him and was like, can you keep up? And started playing and the look on Josh's face was freaking priceless, man. <laughs> and uh, I think from that moment on, Josh knew that I was better at guitar than he is. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and then he let me in the band, which, I mean, come on. Why shouldn't it be <laughs> way better than he is? <laughs> no. All kidding aside, that's how I met Josh, and they asked me to play and take the food with them, and from there, uh, Josh and Ryan were also in Fast City Jokers, and they needed a lead guitar player. And from there, Jonathan somehow found us. Thank the Lord. <laughs> and, uh,. After getting tired of Jonathan Michelson, we started. We decided to start Ship of Fools, which ended up being a pretty good idea, I think, so far. <laughs> so Blackwater has an open mic. Are there other venues in Stockton that have open mics regularly? Yeah, the uh, Impresso Cafe has an open mic. Um, definitely a completely different scene than Blackwater's open mic. I could be biased, in my opinion, just because... Blackwater is like a second home to me, and we've played there so much. But uh, Impresso just feels really trendy and really busy, and I think part of it's the location right next to a bar. So I feel like there's a lot of problems. But every time we've played there, we've uh, we've been able to play much longer than we have been at, at Blackwater for open mics, at least, which kind of makes up for it and we've been getting a really good crowd response so if you're ever in Stockton I'd recommend checking it out Impresso's open mic as well maybe bring a fixed speed bicycle <laughs> just, a, just a hint <laughs> so what do your bands use for promotional material we know a lot of other artists in Stockton um, so a lot of word gets passed out just between this network of musicians that we know. It's nice to kind of have friends who have our back in the music world, and uh, you know, we we tell people about their shows. They tell people about our, our shows. Uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, online resources like that are great. Text messages, random phone calls at four in the morning. You know. <laughs> Whatever, whatever helps get the word out. We'll, we'll do flyers, posters, you know, just whatever is available to us. So have you found that Facebook and YouTube are aids for musicians and these other kind of new technologies that are available now? Yeah, as much as I hate to admit it, um, Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff is really actually quite useful in getting your, you know, your band or whatever you're trying to promote, getting the word out there. Uh, the only reason I regret saying that is that I just morally do not like Facebook and social networking websites because you know, to me I'd r much rather be talking to a person in person and setting something up than doing it all through the internet. You know, I, I appreciate the technol technological advance, but I'd much rather talk to a person face to face and have it be that much more personable than talking to a computer. But so far, it's working. So, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> so, would it be safe to guess that you'll go into music as a career? Oh yeah. I can't really see myself doing anything else but something involving music. Both of your parents are music educators. What do you plan to do for a career? The last thing I ever wanted to do is become a music educator. 
which is ironic because the last three jobs that I've held have been teaching music and art. Um, <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't become a pattern. Because what I really want to do is getting get into studio recording and learning how to really record live bands and stuff. Just because I love doing music, I love doing art, but I'm also a techie at heart. And uh, I just love the technological aspect of recording and capturing different sounds and how to capture new sounds that no one's ever heard of except for on Mars and crazy galaxies 3,000 billion miles away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I really want to do is record. Sounds far out, man. It's hopefully not as far out as it sounds. <laughs> well, I'm hoping it actually happens. Uh, I mean, I would love to make a career just playing music, but a little difficult with the uh, the crap that the music industry is putting out today. I feel like it's kind of biased towards talentless people that sing other people's songs. So I think I'll become a producer and just make money off of those dumb people. <laughs> or you could plan to make money off of those that are as genuine as you are. That works too. I'm hoping that in 2012 all the dumb artists that don't know what they're doing just die out and that's what the minds were talking about the whole time. But, you know, you never know. But cross your fingers. <laughs> well, we'll find out in a year. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Jeff. In case listeners are wondering, all the songs being played along with this are all songs recorded by all the bands Jeff listed earlier in our conversation. Where can they find out information about these bands? Uh, you can look us up on Facebook, um, Take With Food, Facity Jokers, and Ship of Fools, I believe, have Facebooks. I don't know about Jonathan Michelson, but I believe the other three have Facebooks. Ship of Fools, for the Facebook, is spelled with a Z. Find us on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, after this interview we'll have like 30,000 new people added to our page <laughs> so get the word out guys thanks do you have anything else you'd like to say in closing Mr. Anderson no oh, I didn't prepare something for that <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go drink a beer and make some bacon does that work <laughs> sure does thank you again you're welcome bye bye